Hello everyone, my name is Jack Chappell. I upload finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing related videos pretty much every day. So hit that subscribe button and that like button if you want to. And today we are talking about the worst investments I've ever made. Some of these are life investments, some of these are stock investments, some of these are just money, money, money. We're gonna talk about them. But they're all, they're all related to money, so what am I saying? We're gonna start off here with number one. This is for me, this is not for everyone, because most people have to do this. But for me, my worst financial investment was school. Because I was one of those kids where, where I went to school for something that I did not end up using. Now, everyone else in my program, so I was in, I should tell you my backstory. So I went to school because for health sciences, honors health sciences, I was in a very, very, very elite program with a lot of people who are still in school right now doing medical school and dentistry and optometry and all those kinds of things. And so I went to school for that. Now, I don't know what my tuition, my tuition ranged from like seven to 10, 11, 12 grand per semester. And so it, it, we'll just say it's 20 grand a year. 20 grand a year over four years, that's $80,000, okay? $80,000 for something I'm, I don't need. $80,000, so I went to be a doctor. Now I ended up going into business and ended up doing very well. Um, so I'm doing completely fine. However, that's 80 grand that went by. And now here's the thing. I personally, I always say this because I like to get the record straight. I wouldn't have gone to school if I had to take out a student loan. You know, the only reason why I went to school is because my grandma died. My grandma died and we got an inheritance and it ended up paying for school. Okay, I would not have gone if I had to take out a loan. That was on me, that was on me, that was my bad. I should have used that money to actually start a business when I was 18. Maybe I wasn't ready. Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. But however, that was the worst investment because it was just 80 grand down the tube. Do I regret going to school? No, the experience was good. I learned how to be on my own. I learned how to start businesses from my dorm room. However, the financial investment into that, 80 grand, and not using it, that's pretty bad. It's like I just lost 80 grand. So I'm, I always get torn back and forth because I don't regret it. I loved the experience. However, um, you know, there's a lot of people that have, are, are in a similar, were in a similar situation, similar situation to me. So what happens to a lot of people that go to school for, for whatever degree, let's just say they went for health sciences. What happens is they don't end up becoming a successful business person like me, making a lot of money. They, ended up, they end up becoming a barista because they can't get a job anywhere. And so for a lot of people, that doesn't work out. But for me, it did. So for a lot of people, this can be a much, much, much worse investment school. For some people, it works out fine. Some people, you become a doctor and become a lawyer, become whatever you intended to be, and you do fine. But, you know, I wrote one of my thesis, not my thesis, my, I wrote a giant paper about how it was supposed to be about like what career opportunities you wanted to jump into. And because I was in health sciences, the question was actually, what health field do you want to go into after school? And I said on my paper, I don't want to go into a health field. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be an investor, real estate, whatever. And my third option was I'd go back to my corporate job. I don't want to be in the health field. I'm going to school to to learn, I guess, to learn, to be on my own, to have a good work experience, right? And that was what my paper was about. And then I also said how most people that go to school, the majority that go to school for a degree, don't end up getting a job in that degree field. And my teacher, I remember, she wrote out an entire handwritten letter to me and said, hey, you got your life figured out, man. <laughs> it was a girl teacher and she, you've figured out your, you know, your mind's where it should be. Most people that wrote in this essay, wrote this essay, said that they were all going into a health field, but there's not enough jobs for that. Not all hundred people can go into a health field in Waterloo. It just doesn't happen. At the same time, in the same year, some people are gonna become baristas. Some are gonna become mechanics. Some, probably not mechanics. You have to go to trade school for that. Um, some people are gonna end up being a salesperson. So school can be a bad investment. It can be. Sometimes it's not, but for me it was. For me it was 80 grand down the tube. Number two, <laughs> this is a life investment for all you guys out there. I learned this lesson early on. Um, so in terms of 
Growing as a person, this is a fantastic investment. As a person, it's a fantastic investment. Financially, it can be bad. <laughs> so I want you guys to learn from my mistake. So when I had my corporate job, making 30 bucks an hour, um, I had a girlfriend at the time, and I'd pay for everything. I was making a lot of money, she wasn't. I'd pay for everything. I'd pay for all the dates, we'd go out to all these, not fancy places, but places that I wouldn't go to on my own. All these um, high-end restaurants, and I'd pay for it all, and you know, tens of thousands of dollars were probably lost. <laughs> I don't know what the exact number is, it's at least 10 grand. So, relationships are bad financial investments. Now, however, they're good emotional investments. I mean, seriously, without that relationship, I wouldn't be able to talk. That relationship taught me how to actually speak as a person. I was a very introverted person until I had someone to talk to every day, and all of a sudden, I became a good speaker. I was able to articulate my thoughts a little bit better. And so, there's also things too, like learning to be emotionally you know, connective and all those things. However, the financial investment. If you're with someone who is dating you because they think that you're gonna be in a good financial position or because they can do fancy things with you because you can pay for them or because you're dumping all this money into them, I mean, I had to learn that a little bit the hard way. That wasn't you know, who that person was, but however, it was one of those people where you know, if I weren't to become a doctor, I remember when I said that I didn't wanna become a doctor and then she was like, she was upset a little bit um, because I guess it wasn't a stable field or I wouldn't be making as much money now. It's actually kind of funny looking back on that. Uh, how, I think I'm, how much do doctors make? I think I might be making more than them. Probably give me one more year and I'll probably make as much as a doctor, which is funny to think about. So relationships can be a big financial hole for you guys. And I had to learn this from 18 to 21 years old. It can be a giant hole where all your money goes into and you never see it again. So keep an eye out for that, all you girls and guys out there. Guys more, because guys still pay for more stuff usually. But I had to learn that. That was a terrible, terrible financial investment. Uh, don't be with someone who, you have, who insists on spending all your money. <laughs> I had to learn that when I was a kid. When I was, I was a kid, I was 18. Um, so number three. Number three, we're gonna go to, oh yeah, so, this is a little bit of a story. We're gonna just call this one PHM. So I talk about how my one stock loss was Kyara, or was it Kyara oil, Kyara oil? Something like that, some Canadian oil stock. I just, I lost a, like 50 bucks, it wasn't much. But, I was talking to my dad, recently, a couple of weeks ago, and he remembers when I was early on in investing, the first stock that, it was my second stock I ever bought, it was a tip from him. I wasn't my second stock. No, 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 this was, this was, um, this was a few years ago. I don't know if this was before I made a lot of money in the stock market or afterwards, it was probably afterwards when I was sick. So anyways, I took stock advice. <laughs> from my dad for the first time. My dad has made more money in the stock market than most of you make in a year, all right? My dad has, will probably make, you know, he's fully paralyzed. He, all he does all day is look at the stock market and that's all he does. He just trades from his computer. He usually has a strategy of about three to six months of buying and selling, three to six months or 12 months. A Little bit shorter than I would like. I always say minimum six months, but you know, he does shorter sometimes. So he, uh, he's made lots of money in the stock market over since he's been paralyzed, and he's done pretty well. However, um, he gave me one tip one time. He said, I'm investing a lot in this, you should too. I forgot about this until I talked to him recently. So I was like, okay, I'll put in, uh, just because I don't like listening to other people, I only put in like 500 bucks. It wasn't very much. Uh, so I put in 500 bucks into this stock. Maybe I should put up a picture on the, on the screen of <laughs> what happened. Um, so this is patient home monitoring. Go look it up, what happened to that. <laughs> uh, so here, here's, it was a little bit my fault though. So what happened was that I, um, I bought the stock and I didn't even look at the stock market at all for like eight months. And it's because I was sick at the time, I think. And so I bought the stock, I don't know what the exact number was, but let's just say we'll round it to $50 per stock, okay? Round it to $50 per stock. So I bought probably 10, 
Okay? Now what happened was, it's just, it taught me never to listen to people, was that stock dropped to like five bucks. <laughs> they essentially went bankrupt. And I, I remember looking at it, it was like just a couple weeks ago. No, not a couple weeks ago, it must have been, uh, man, this must, be, this must have been last year, maybe a year or two when this happened. And then I forgot about it until a few weeks ago. It was that I saw that it dipped, like I lost pretty, pretty much like 400 bucks. I don't know what the exact number was, but I lost a lot of money on that deal. And that was one of my worst financial investments. And to be honest, I think it's a repressed memory <laughs> because it wasn't my investment. It was technically my dad's tip. And so technically I always think of it as I didn't lose any money. <laughs> sure, I did lose my money, but it wasn't my investment that lost money, it was my dad's. I trusted him, he lost it. It was one of his big losses ever in his life. And uh, he didn't take the loss. I didn't take the loss, he didn't take the loss. I'm not selling it, screw it. <laughs> but I always forget about that. So technically I've had two losses in the stock market. PHM and Cairo Oil. I'll never forget those again. PHM, PHM. <sighs> We're gonna move on to number four here. So remember, number three teaches you never take exact stock tips. Analyze everything on your own. Sometimes, you know, I'm gonna talk about stocks a little bit more. You know, when I break down a stock, you break it down on your own. See if it's right for your strategy. See if it can tolerate your risk. I mean, if I invest in Google, maybe it's not the right strategy for you. I don't like buying tons of stocks without dividends. That'll be one of them that I probably will buy, right? And so um, maybe it's not right for you. Look at it. Maybe Amazon's not right for you. Maybe bank stocks aren't right for you. Maybe ETFs aren't right for you. Maybe an index fund isn't right for you. I will talk about them, about what's probably right for me, but it might not be right for you. That's why don't take stock tips from everyone. Do your own research. Just don't do whatever I say just because I say it. Don't invest in something just because I say it. I think it's good. Never do that with anyone. <laughs> okay, maybe Warren Buffett. <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding. Okay, so we're gonna move on to number four here. And this is just one that I made as a kid. And so this is gonna wrap this video up, I guess, after this. Is um, maybe you guys make this too, but it's just um, stuff. I, um, it was like, I, I don't know how I should say this. Stuff I, I should say, maybe erase this. I'll say one, Time, dumb purchases. I was bad with this as a kid, but I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson early on and I got better. I mean, I think I was perfect by the time I was about 16 or 17 years old. I didn't have any of these one-time dumb purchases. So I started learning my lesson. I used to buy video games all the time. I used to buy video games just because, you know, I bought the Family Guy game. Right, just because it was Family Guy. I bought this sports game because I would play the other sports game. I bought this franchised game because it was this franchise that I liked the game before. And I learned my lesson from a game called Ultimate Spider-Man. I spent, uh, I, I think it was probably 11 years old, and I spent, I think that was, I think I, no, that wasn't my Livestrong money. I think I probably had some sort of allowance money or chore money or something like that. I know allowance money, Ugh. okay. Right up until the time I was 14, my family was fairly wealthy and then my dad became fully paralyzed. He didn't get into the stock market until I, so about six years after he became paralyzed. And so we pretty much went from like really wealthy, not really wealthy, but like we were upper class, right? We were upper class then we went from that to pretty much having a zero income overnight, literally overnight. And we had no money for like six years and, or I guess eight years until I started working. So um, pretty much, well, we're gonna go back to this. I had allowance money, and it was whatever, 20 bucks a month, 30 bucks a month, whatever it is. All right, I bought this game for, for like 50 bucks. It's Ultimate Spider-Man. The worst piece of crap game I ever played in my life. Ultimate Spider-Man, I cried my eyes out that night. All my months money, my months and months of money were just gone in this crappy game that I never wanted to play again. And that was a one-time purchase, which just sucked. And I remember asking my mom, can we return it? Can we return it? <laughs> I'd already played it a bunch. And um, by a bunch, I mean like two hours, and it just sucked. It sucked so much. So that started me 
along the road of like one-time purchases about being wary of them doing your homework and stuff and just you know my big vice was video games buying video games that some of them were great I mean some of them were like Halo where I put in thousand hours into them which they were great for the money investment but weren't great for like a time investment like should you put a thousand hours into a video game probably not but did I get my money's worth hell yeah <laughs> And so I had a bunch of those purchases, like one-time video games that I'd play through once, and then that was it, like God of War. Well, that was an awesome game. Loved it. Still one of my favorite games of all time. Like games that I'd play once, I'd spend 50, 60, 70 bucks on them and never play them again. That's not a good investment. So one-time dumb purchases. For some people, for most people, it's clothes. For girls, it's clothes. I've noticed this from my girlfriend a lot. I always get on her case. And she's like, I just bought these. They were on sale. That's their excuse. But they were on sale. Well, fuck, half, the, half of everything's on sale in clothing stores. <laughs> um, and what, happened, what happens? You wear those clothes for two months, and then you get more clothes. And then your new clothes turn old. Every, You know what? Here's what I like to say. This is from, what's this movie? I think it was called Take This Waltz with Seth Rogen and um, Heath, Ledger's, Heath Ledger's old wife, I forget before he passed away, I forget her name. But uh, it was a really good movie, but it was called Take This Waltz, and it's about how new things become old. All new things become old. So the premise of the movie is about Seth Rogen is married to this, his wife, and his wife just bored. Okay, Seth Rogen in this movie is like, he's a little bit of a dick, but he's like fairly nice guy. He's just a normal, he's a normal dude. He's making, they're just getting by, they're living paycheck to paycheck, but she's not happy. She's bored because it's old. He's been, she's been with this guy for five years. And so she has a fling with this new guy, with this new neighbor, better looking, in shape, has all this fun. They, they, she starts cheating on Seth Rogen. And then she eventually leaves Seth Rogen for this new guy. But then what do you think happens? New things get old. That new feeling that she had with this new guy, all of a sudden, all this new and cool experience that all these fun things that they were doing, she realizes that she had all those things with Seth Rogen too when they started dating. But all new things get old. And so, actually I loved the moral of that movie. So what happened was, was that she left Seth Rogen and then what happened to Seth Rogen, actually it's really similar to a little bit of my story a little bit. What happened to Seth Rogen was that he ended up becoming a famous author, chef, making lots of money, and then she ended up being with this guy who was broke, and a broke artist. <laughs> and I, love, I loved how it was a happy ending for the guy who got his heart broken. Um, but that's what that movie is about, about how all new things get old. And so I'm relating this back to purchases too. A new shiny thing, everyone wants the new iPhone 6, iPhone 7, iPhone 8 iPhone 15 they want the new shiny thing but all new things get old as long as it can serve a function for you over time that's what's more important will it serve the function for you over time whatever you're buying if you're buying shoes you know my shoes these shoes have lasted me two years two years how many people have have shoes that have lasted two years I have boots that have lasted four years I still wear them and I think I think I only have two pairs I think I have three pairs. No, because then I have, some, I have some dress shoes. I have some dress shoes to look nice and businessy sometimes. That's about it. I mean, I know people like family members that buy a new pair of shoes every month. They have over 20 pairs of shoes sitting around. It's just stupid. So all new things get old. One-time purchases are stuff or things. For me, it was video games. For you guys, it might be clothes. But just remember that you have to overcome that feeling. That, um, that oxy, what is it, oxytocin or dopamine that gets released when you buy stuff for the first time? That is something that you guys got to overcome. And it's great. I mean, you, you guys buy stuff and it's cool. You get this rush feeling when you buy it and then that fades in like a day. You know, the best, <laughs> the, the happiest you feel about a purchase, about a one-time purchase like that is the moment you buy it or the moment you're about to use it for the first time. You never, you're never as happy after you use it, or after you use it for its, yeah, use it for its purpose. I mean, it's just strange how that works. So if you guys can overcome that feeling of making s stupid one-time purchases because it makes you feel good or because you think you'll need something, just realize you don't. You need four things. You, you need food, water, shelter, and warmth, right? 
And I guess that you need other people too, like social communication, but I don't count that. So you need four things. And if it doesn't fall under those things, I mean, and even those four things, like you don't need a big house. I want one, but you don't need one. Uh, you don't need to go out for that $15 lunch. Your friends will be okay if you don't go or if you just order water. That's something I had to learn too recently. My friends were going out to, they always invite me out now because uh, we're all living in the same city now. But like, I'm not going out for $15 dinners twice a week. I mean, I just don't want to do that. If I want to do that, I mean, I just don't have the time and I don't want to spend it. I don't want to spend the money. I'm using, I'd rather put that 30 bucks towards advertising for a business, for the business right now, or save it up for stocks or something. Um, so what are your one-time purchases actually? Are you, is it close for you guys? Think about it. I want you guys to think about your one-time dumb purchases. For me, it was video games. I mean, I bought my first video game actually in a year, about a week ago. It was Civilization VI and it's a great game. I actually love it. I'm probably going <laughs> to... I know I shouldn't have bought it. It's going to suck up a lot of more of my time, but um, and I'm okay with that. I'm pretty disciplined about that stuff now. But what's it for you? For mine, it was video games. I've bought... How many... Actually, you know what? Let's do the math on this, actually. How many video games have I bought? Man, this is going to freak me out, actually. Maybe you guys can do this, too. Can you guys do this with me? How much... Think about your biggest one-time purchases that you make. Is it shoes? Is it clothes? Is it video games? What is it? About dumb one-time purchases that you keep making. Is it eating out with people? You now we're gonna do the math on this. Okay. So since we'll say when did I I'd say since grade, we'll go since grade nine for me. So PlayStation 3 games, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4 games, computer games, I probably have, I don't know, what's a conservative estimate? Uh, you guys aren't going to like me for this. Probably somewhere around, I don't know, I'd say conservatively 80 games. 80 games since grade 9. Probably a little bit more than that, but we're going to say 80. So I know games now sell for 70 or 80 bucks, and when I started buying them, they were about 50. So we're going to say average about 60 bucks. 60 bucks a purchase. So times 60. So quick math there, uh, 800 times six, that's $4,800 on video games. <laughs> it's probably more than that. <laughs> I mean, when you think about the systems I had to buy, I probably have 100 games of, since grade nine, probably got 100. Think about all the in-game purchases too. I mean, this is, oh man, this is probably, since I was, man, I was, I was so bad at this when I was 14 years old. This is. You know, this is a learning experience for all of you. This is probably over 10K that I've spent on games. So I'm not perfect. 10K plus on games, and largely that was when I was 17, 18, 19 years old. Um, when I was working corporate job or working summer jobs, probably when I was younger, it was probably 16 as well. Largely it was in those three or four years that all this happened. 80 games, man. Whew. That was, that was not good to look at. <laughs> What's that thing for you? I want you to add up the math on yours. Is yours better or worse than mine? Oh man, I can't believe I did that. That sucks. It sucks when you have to do math on games. I mean, think about 80 games over the course of, we'll say eight years, because I haven't really bought games since I graduated. I think Civilization was the only game I've bought since I graduated. Maybe, did I buy Overwatch when I was graduated? I don't know. I don't know, but I pretty much all those were in eight years. So we're talking over a thousand dollars a year on video games. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> okay, that was that was this video took a different turn. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this video up. Um, so what are some of the worst investments you've ever made? I guess mine's video games. Now I think it's official. Mine's video games. Actually, no, school's still number one, but video games is up there. Video games, I didn't think it would be tied with my ex, but I mean, it's close. <laughs> Financially, it's close, it's tight, they're neck and neck. What was worse, video games or X? I don't know, they're pretty close, they're, they're neck and neck. So, thank you very much for watching. I want you to post in the comments, what are your vices? What are your one-time purchases that you made that were dumb? These were mine, these were four. So, thank you very much for watching, you're all very beautiful people. Make sure to check out my, uh, my program in the link below. It's a uh, you can sign up for it. 
It's, you, you get a stock market program, teaches, we've had hundreds of people go through that and love it, I love it. Um, hundreds of people go through that. I, I'm actually starting to do like live stock breakdowns and live trades and stuff. I put up a couple videos and book summaries, so they're up there too. And also like, what, like eight plus hours or nine hours of a business program, a wealth accelerator program. You get that for free if you sign up. So go check that all out. Hundreds of people have signed up, I love it. And I love all your faces. You're all very beautiful people. I'll see you guys in the next video.